Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here once again. My name is Heritage at this uh, markets analyst at HFM Nigeria. And as always, we'll check through the market this morning, find out what the overall sentiment is, find out what the true dominant drivers are in the markets, um, if they provide opportunities, and then how we can take you know advantage of it. But like always, remember that this is just a communication material. And nothing in this communication contains or should be considered as investment advice or investment recommendation. This is acknowledged that investments in FX and CFD products is characterized by a certain degree of uncertainty and that any investment of this nature involves a high level of risk for which the user is solely responsible and liable. Now, what we have this morning in terms of the overall market environment, it's a more mixed, you know, mixed start of the day. Um, generally, we still have light flows across board, currencies moving in, light, light, um, light swings. Um, generally, even commodities, generally assets, generally are just moving in tiny, tiny ranges so far today. Um, it's not really a surprise on the Monday after a very volatile week last week. We'll talk about that now in a bit. And apart from that, we also have, you know, um, bank holiday as well for the U.S., uh, with the U.S. also observing its June 10th, you know, National Independence Day. So there is that to also pay attention to. When we have big bank holidays like that, usually markets don't usually have the appetite to drive, you know, new movements, new change the catalyst, change the driver, or latch on. New changes generally are, you know, lack an appetite basically in markets right okay so i wrote this down earlier i said last week we had in a bout of volatility um central bank action was the major major theme for last week we had the federal reserve increasing treasury by 75 basis points um we had the bank of england increasing treasury by 25 basis points in line with what they've already been doing in a while now and even snb the swiss national bank hiking rates massively surprising markets by about 50 basis points the boj on friday maintained their ultra loose policy Ultra easy policy stuck to you know leaving interest rates unchanged and even said that they they wouldn't hesitate to even ease further if the need be. Clearly, you know um, staying off you know the trend that we've seen in recent central banks, right? But that caused a lot of volatility in the markets last week, right? It had a lot of downside for equities last week. Massive, massive, massive downside for. <laughs> The U.S. the major equities generally, but so far today we have seen more of a calm, more of a calmer move. You know, slower start to the day. Markets are calmer at start of the session. We have light moves across board. We look at the equity space; they're trading mostly mixed. Um, U.S. yes, U.S. futures are a little bit you know off the lows, but generally still flat. Right, and then you compare it to the kind of moves that we had last week. Definitely nothing to write home about there. Commodities are still generally weaker. And we could look at oil prices trading in the green so far today, but considering the kind of downs that we had last week, for example, Friday now we had about 10% drop in something like US oil, right? That that's clearly just shows that the kind of upside since so far today, despite upside since so far today, is tiny relative to the moves that we had coming from last year. Now, because of the low liquidity environment that we have, it's very likely that we see markets trading more and more muted. In fact, the moves, the muted moves may continue because we're already seeing it. So that shouldn't be a surprise to us. For the dollar itself, it's trading amongst the weakest currencies so far. Um, bond yields are trading a little bit flat, but we've had comments from Fed members. Um, we had Walla, we had Bostick on the wires, where basically they talk to the hawkish guns saying you know continuing the battle against you know ultra ultra high decade high you know inflation right so there's that to pay attention to on the weaker side the japanese remains really really weak still the weakest amongst the major currencies um bank of japan's you know um meeting on friday where they basically left rates on change and stopped their dovish guns stuck to their dovish speech right clearly why there's the gap, the policy gap between the Bank of Japan and other major central banks? Almost all the other major central banks have hiked interest rate, except the ECB and the BOJ. The ECB already said they're going to hike by 25 basis points in next month, while the Bank of Japan are still looking to continue the easing policy. That makes you know um, the gap wider. It weakens Japanese and against the other 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 major currencies, and especially against even the dollar. As long as yields continue to keep overall supported, clearly it weakens the Japanese and even more. Right, so there's that to back of my mind. Um, for the card, so the card is also generally low as well today. Um, you know, when you look at the aftermath of the 10% drop we had in US oil yesterday, I'm sorry, Friday, clearly that is enough to still see some weakness in the card. But all this said, you know, the moves are still very much, not very small. And I'm not, you know, looking to jump into any of these right now. On the stronger side, I'm leading to the major, leading the majors to the upside. Um, the NZD is pretty strong today, but 
even with that, right, the moves generally are still, I mean, marginal on a balance, right? So, but it's leading the majors in terms of, you know, the leaderboard. The CTF is also still strong. I mean, CTF is still expected to even keep being strong. First of all, if we keep having risk of flows like we've had for the last couple of weeks, if you have it keep reverberating in markets, and then we have, you know, the SMB has already surprised markets already, that upside is still very much, you know, still very much evident to play in. So there's that better thing to do. If that continues, I mean, the more upside for the CHF might not really be a surprise, you know, for us and market participants. So there is that also put at the back of our mind. Looking across board, picking the strongest currency right now, the NZD against JPY, the CHF, uh, um, JPY rather, and even the USD, most of them are just light moves heading into a clear resistance level. For example, NZD JPY is struggling at 85.5. That's a resistance level there. Um, CTF JPY, it's just off the 140 high that we formed on Friday, right? There's that to pay attention. Even NZD USD mostly just all oh, mostly at resistance levels, right? Now, generally, right, not much, not much is going on in the market so far today, right? Especially when you judge by the kind of moves that we've seen so far across board and the thin liquidity environment that we have you know, today, Monday, right? And there's also a very light economic calendar day. But focus will remain clearly on central bank commentary. Later today, we have a bout of um, central bankers on the wires, you know, BOE, Haskell, Man on the wires, and ECB, Lagarde on the wires. Even Fed's Bullard are all scheduled, you know, to speak in the day ahead. I don't expect there to be much movement in terms of, you know, um, price movement basically in the market so far today. But you cannot really be overprepared because, it's markets, right? Any new information can really, really turn things on one side. All right, now quickly just looking across board, just quickly just scanning through. Um, first of all, you look at the equity space. This is a big picture of what we're talking about, right? I mean, basically, this is US 500. Basically have not done anything so far today. The ranges of Friday and even America session on Thursday, we're still here, right? Yes, you're struggling around this key um, 3700 level, but I mean, there's nothing here. This gives you a picture of what we're having so far. Um, US 100 as well. I like to use US 100 as a major gauge as to what's going on generally in the market. So there is that to pay attention to. You look at US 100 as well. I mean, let's clean this up a bit. And then generally too, I mean, we've not really done so much. Yes, we're off you know, um, Friday's lows, off Thursday's lows. Yeah, it could look like we're grinding higher, but compared to the kind of moves that we had, you know, for the whole of, excuse me, for the whole of last week, I mean, it's not really um, that surprising, right? And then even if you even look at this, this is just about a 50% level of the downs that we had on Thursday last week, right? I mean, just look at this, for example. Just a moment. Right. I'm not sure why this hasn't loaded. Okay, good. Right, you look at this as well. We just pulled back to 50% interest level there about, right? And now we're even off the high. So, I mean, it's not really, you know, something major, major, major that you want to be latching on to. Um, you look at the currency space, even Perry Stremers is looking at CAD City, for example. Basically, nothing. Nothing done today. Uh, uh, let's look for um, each other one. I think I have City of JPY. Where's City of JPY? Just look at that city JP and just have a picture of where that is trading right now. All right. Uh, okay. All right. So far today. Now, this is still not much, right? Next change is really little, 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 little there. But you know, you also have like in mind. You look at even the major pairs, mostly generally, there's really not much going on. NCD JPY, yeah. So I, I just pointed out this slight, slight support trend line from here. But I mean, we're basically struggling at this key at 5.5 level and basically struggling, struggling, struggling. And then when it comes to days like this, certainly when you have such light environments, light flow, you want to be more patient. Right. For the week ahead, there's still so much to look out for. And the Central Bank speak will still be very, very important. I think CHF trends is still one I want to, you know, look for something in. Um, the dollar clearly still very much on the center of our attention, but there's still much to pay attention to. When you have, you know, um, environments like this where things are really not doing so much, you're better off just, you know, being more patient, you know, being more, um, just managing your risk, and just being more on the sidelines and wait for clearer and a lot more better opportunities before you look to jump into any other thing in the market. Like I said, on the calendar, it's a light one. Um, basically, not much going on. Just a couple of central bank speakers, you know, scheduled on the wires. And then maybe from tomorrow, we'll have something better we can work on. But for now, that's it. Um, I want to say a very big thank you for sitting and listening. Um, do enjoy the rest of your trading day. And please do not hesitate to ask if you have any questions going forward. Thank you and goodbye for now.